Welcome biology students. This tutorial is on how to clean up a graph and make it presentable so you can get full marks. So here we have a scatter plot between butterfly wingspan and butterfly proboscis length or tongue length. If you hand this graph in you will get a low mark because it is uh, well it's ugly. Microsoft Excel puts a lot of stuff into graphs by default that we do not want and no scientist wants to see really. Hopefully in their next version of Excel they'll make their default settings a little cleaner. So I'm going to take you through the steps of how to get from this graph which would get a failing mark to a graph that would get you a perfect mark. The things I'm going to be showing you are not only applicable to the first year biology courses here at Carleton, they're good rules of thumb to have for any graphs you do in anywhere in life. Uh, the importance of visualizing data trends is uh, whether you're making a report at work or preparing a graph for one of your other courses at school, it's, there are certain things that are just plain old clear and that's what we're going to be finding. The rule of thumb that's guiding all these rules is uh, maximizing the ink to noise ratio. So basically we want to get rid of any ink that is not showing the reader a trend in our data. So I'm going to just drag to make this chart, this graph bigger first of all to show you a bit better what I'm going to be doing. Okay. What should we do first? Let's delete this title first of all. Remember, graph titles go under the figure and they're described as figure one, blah, 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 blah. So we just click on and then hit the delete button. And we're also going to delete the legend because we only have one data series here. So there's no need for a legend. There's nothing to distinguish. Every dot means the same thing. So we just hit delete on that guy too. Now we're going to delete the grid lines. These grid lines add a lot of ink and they're distracting and they are not informative at all. So we just click on them with the left mouse button and then hit the delete button. Okay, already we've gotten rid of a lot of unnecessary ink. Now we're going to do some more. So, let's see. First, let's get rid of the color. Use color only if absolutely necessary in a graph. And it's rarely necessary. The reason for that is uh, most scientists, like most people, have a black ink printer. And so you can make a beautiful graph with lots of colors and it's all very nice. And then the person you, sends it to, you send it to prints it out on their black ink printer and it all looks like various stages of gray that are difficult to distinguish. So it's best to keep things black, white, and uh, various patterns of black, like hash marks, diagonal marks, things like this. So in this case, instead of having these dots be blue, we're just going to have them be black. So we right click on the data series, and we format the data series. We're going to go here to marker fill, and instead of letting it automatically choose how to color these markers, I'll move this so we can see it, we're going to go to solid fill and we're going to choose black. Now if I zoom in on this, you're going to see that uh, there's still some color there. Not much, but just enough that you would be docked a mark or two if you were to hand this in still there's a blue outline around each of these markers. So we're going to get rid of that too. Format data series. We could have done this all in one step. I just wanted to show you by zooming in that we haven't done everything yet. Uh, line, no not line color, I'm sorry. Line, line here refers to a line that would be showing a trend line. We want marker line color. So instead of it letting it automatically choose it, we're going to tell it black, great, there we go. Now it's nice and black. Okay. Next steps. 
we've got the data all clustered into a little corner up here and all this blank space over here onto the left and over here under the data. This is a poor use of space for this graph. The whole purpose of a graph is to show a trend in the data and black blank space is taking away from any of that. So we're going to chop out all this left side blank space and chop out all this bottom blank space so we can maximize the data area to show any trends. To do that we need to tell Excel where exactly to start the x-axis scale. So if I can click appropriately, oh I already have, I right click on the x-axis and I go to format axis. And here it shows the settings Excel has chosen automatically of where to start and, and, and the axis. We're going to overrule its automatic settings and tell it to start the x-axis at uh, 30. And where it ends it is already okay. Close. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing with the x-axis. Right click on the x I'm sorry, on the y-axis. Right click on that axis and we're going to start this one at uh, how about 10 or 12. Maybe uh, 10 is a nice round number. Let's start with 10. Excellent. Okay, so we've gotten rid of the blank space. You can definitely see the trend here now. There's still a few more things we need to do. First of all, these axis lines are automatic, are by default gray with Microsoft Excel. That's unfortunate. We should make them black. If you have not the best printer at home, I know my printer is not exactly great. Gray things uh, can be skipped sometimes or just are so faint that it's hard to see. So we're going to make it jet black. Format the axis. This again we could have done all in one step before but I'm separating the steps so you can see them. Uh, line color. Instead of automatic we choose black. Excellent. And line style. Let's make it a little bit thicker so it shows up easier. One. Yeah, one's good. Same thing on the y-axis. Okay, so now we have a couple of black axes. These data points are a bit small. They're okay, if you were to hand this in it would probably be okay, but I think it would be even better if we were to make them bigger. So right now by default they're size 7. We're just going to bump them up, make them 10. Lovely. Now the data are really jumping out at you. When you look at this graph you can see the data first thing. The font size, this is probably because I've stretched the graph bigger so that we can see it all, but the font looks pretty darn small for these axes. And all these numbers on both axes are a bit unnecessary. We don't need a tick mark every single millimeter along both axes. That's distracting. It's, that's unnecessary ink on the graph. So we're going to change our axis scales so that there's a tick mark only every two millimeters on this axis and uh, we're also going to increase the font size so that the numbers show up easier. Format axis uh, so we're going to go to the major units which are major units are the ones with tick marks and instead of every millimeter we're going to make it every two millimeters. Good and we're going to change the font. <clears throat> Let's make a 12 point font. Lovely. Format axis, we're going to do the same thing over here. Uh, how about every 5 millimeters? Excellent. Font. Okay, now we need to add axis labels. A reader looking at this right now would have no idea what uh, these two axes represent. So in the layout tab of the chart tools area, you have axis titles. You go here, 
we're going to choose the primary horizontal axis title, which is the x-axis title, and we're going to just click on here, and it shows up. We're going to select axis title and instead type uh, wingspan. Whoops. There we go. And it's by default made it, I don't know what font, but pretty small, so we're going to change that as well. Oops, not with that option. I right click and then choose font. 12, and don't bold it, just keep it the same font uh, style as everything else. The more differences of font and font styles you have, the more distracting it is. Just make it as clean as possible. The y-axis title, we're going to choose rotated title. I'll show you why the other option is bad. Vertical title is where the letters go down like this, and that's just messy. So we're going to choose the uh, rotated title. Proboscis length. Make sure to enter the units in parentheses in your axis titles. Otherwise, you'll be docked marks because it'll be unclear exactly what those numbers mean. And I'm going to change the font there. 12 and unbold. There we go. That's looking nice, eh? So, one other thing you can do is add a trend line. Uh, I'm not sure exactly which graphs will be demanding trend lines for, if any, in future labs. But if we do demand one, I'll show you how to add one. You just right click on the data series. This is only applicable to scatter plots, whereas most of the other stuff I've been talking about is applicable to pretty much any graph. So we right click on the data series, format the data series. Wait a minute. Add trend line. That's what I wanted to do. Add trend line. It gives you all these trend line options. For the most part, we're just going to be looking at linear trend lines if we look at trend lines at all. Line color, make it solid black. Line style, make it big enough so you can see it, 1.5. And never put any shadow or 3D stuff. That's just messy. Messy, messy. There we go. We got a nice trend line there. Beautiful. Okay, our graph looks great. We are now going to transfer it to Microsoft Word so that we can make a nice uh, figure caption below it. So all you do is you, you click on your graph, you hit Control C to copy, or you can right click and click on copy. And then we go to Word and you paste. There's your graph. And I'm going to hit Enter. This is where you type your caption, figure one, blah, 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 relationship between proboscis length and wingspan in yes, repay butterflies. And then you'd go on from there if you need to see any details. Uh, one thing I still need to do, and I could have done this in Excel before I brought it to Word, or I can just do it here, is there's this box around the figure. We don't want that. That's extra ink, and you know that is a no-no. So we click on the graph, we right-click, format shared area, border color, no line around the border. Close. There we go. You've just made a perfect graph. Perfect marks right there. And uh, this is the type of cleanup procedure you need to do every time you build a graph in Microsoft Excel. Get rid of all that Microsoft junk, present the data clearly, your readers will thank you, your TAs will thank you, and your, uh, your marks will thank you.